In this video, I want to talk about the difference between serialize and JSON. There's differences between JSON and serialize. JSON is a format that you take like an array of elements and turn it into a JSON format that can be shared between different languages. Serialize is kind of the same thing, but more just for PHP. There's different times where we use JSON and different times where we use serialize. And those different times is if we know specifically what the data is going to be, we use JSON. And for an example of that is like if we're passing order information between um, two different websites, that order information typically has the um, order ID, the amount of the order, the time of the order, um, very basic information like that. It usually doesn't have a description or notes or anything like that that someone actually types in. And so we put that into a JSON format. And the reason why we put it into a JSON format is because it's just a little bit of a smaller file size than if we serialize it. Serializing it um, adds a few more characters throughout the serialization that um, JSON doesn't add. But if any data comes through that is user inputted data. Typically we don't JSON it because quotes, single and double quotes could cause a problem in that JSON format that um, corrupts the data. So at that point we would use serialize. So I wanna show you guys the difference actually in code of JSON and serialize um, so that you can see kind of what I'm talking about. But before I get started with that, if you're not subscribed to the channel or if you're new here, I create YouTube videos based on coding. A lot of them are based on WordPress, but a lot of them are based on the comments that you guys put in the videos. So consider subscribing to the channel as I'm creating a lot more videos here in the future. I've got 74 actually in the list of videos to make, but if you comment and you you have a video that you want to see and I think that it's more important than everything else that I have in the list, I will make that video and and share it with you guys. So let's get started showing you guys the difference between JSON and Serialize. So in here in the code, we're going to create a new plugin. We're on, we're on the uh, site ideapro.io that we do testing and tutorials and stuff with. So we're going to create a new plugin and we're going to create a new folder under the plugins directory. And we're just going to call it JSON example .php, or JSON example. Sorry, that's the folder name, JSON example. And then inside that folder, we're going to create a new file and it's going to be called JSON example.php. And if you've never built a plugin, that is how you start a plugin. It actually can be a single file. Um, you could just call it JSON example.php, put it in the plugins directory and WordPress will pick up that file and show it as a plugin. But if you put it in a folder, it needs to be JSON. It needs to be whatever you name that folder, the file inside of it needs to match with a .php extension. Okay. So here is the JSON hyphen example.php file that we just created. We're going to create some uh, comments here and we're going to say plugin name and this is just going to be JSON example. And then the description is going to be just an example for YouTube. YouTube, let's spell it right. There we go. All right, so then uh, version, and we can just put 1.0. All right, and then we'll close off our comments. That is the basics that you need for a plugin and uh, to get a to get a plugin started. All right, so I'm uploading that. I'm using Sublime Text Editor 3 and a package installed on Sublime that is SFTP by WP Bond that will upload files directly to the server. I'm not working locally. I'm working actually on a live site. So we're gonna go over here to our ideapro.io and we're going to .io. We're gonna go to the WP admin and we're going to go to plugins. And here is our new JSON example 
plugin that we just made. Now, if you don't have FTP access um, and you just want to uh, install this plugin, you can go to the folder in your file manager, whether it's on a Mac and it's Finder, or if you go to Explorer on Windows and you open that folder, the plugins folder, and you just right click on it and compress that as a zip file. Then you can go into your site here, go to add new, upload plugin, you know, and then you can drop that zip file here and upload that plugin. It's a little bit more work on it because when you make changes, you have to delete the plugin and then upload it. So uh, using FTP, you can just make changes as you go and it's a lot easier. All right, so we're gonna go back to our plugin and we're gonna hit activate. Of course, this plugin doesn't do anything yet because we haven't told it to. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a short code and that short code is going to allow me to put the information that we're doing on the page so that you guys can see it. So JSON example, come on, short code. All right. So that's gonna be our function. Now what I wanna show you guys is if we use this in our short code, so let's go over here to our site and let's go to pages and we're gonna to go to a very simple page. What do we have on the contact page? Nothing. All right, let's use this page as an example. If we put a short code in here, we're in the block editor of Gutenberg here, short code, we're gonna put two brackets around it and then we're gonna paste in that short code. All right, update. We come over to our contact page and we refresh, it's going to show these brackets, right? This is actually not what we want to put in as a short code. On the code side, we wanna come under here and say add short code. And in here is what we're going to actually put as the, the, the text here to, for the short code. Now we can use what we just put there in there that works perfectly fine. And our callback function can be the same exact thing. I sometimes do that just so that we know how to easily find that short code in the, in the text or in the code of the site. So you can change this to JSON example, whatever you wanna change it to. But whenever you do that, you need to change it also in the in here. So if we change it to JSON example, it would look like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say update. And we're going to come over here to our code and save that. All right. So now if we go back to our page and we come over here and we refresh, that square, the square brackets around that is going to completely disappear. So if you have a a short code showing up on your website somewhere and you don't know where it is in the code and you just want to get rid of it. More than likely it's not in the code if it's showing as a square bracket. More than likely it may have been part of a plugin that you used where it put in that short code and now you've disabled that plugin and so now it's showing that square bracket. If that shows up somewhere in a page, you can create a simple function like this that does nothing and but it will get rid of that those square brackets and that short code, or go to the page and remove it. All right, so now we want our function, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Now we want our function to actually do something. So we go over here and refresh, it doesn't do anything. If we echo out and we just say, hello world, and we come back over here and refresh, it's just gonna print out right here, hello world. Now. By doing that, we've just broke the back end of the website. So if we go over here and we decide we wanna make a change to this page and we hit update, it now breaks. It says updating failed. The response is not a valid JSON response. Okay, so the reason that is, is because we're echoing something out to our page. So the way to do that would be to return that string of text and come back over here and hit update. And now we've fixed the, the page. Now I've put that in here, it says, hello world. I've done, the, uh, um, I've done examples 
in tutorials on previous videos and and just last week i did some but <clears throat> and that's not what we're here for today i want to show you guys the difference between json and serialize all right so let's get rid of this we're going to create an array so let's just say my array is equal to square brackets now we can create an array like that we can create an array like this we can then go into this array and start adding in um, values in that array but typically whenever i'm creating an array i like to create it like this because then i can say my array and i can open up square brackets on this side and say is equal to one right or apple or whatever our array is going to say now by doing this, let's do three or four. We're gonna say two, three, four, and five. Now, if you're not familiar with arrays, arrays start with zero and zero, one, two, three, four. So our number five here will actually be four whenever we print it out. All right, so we're going to do show array. This is my pre-formatted um, printing an array that I do. So pre-tags, here, I'll show you this just real quick. Let's do print r. And if we print r this my array, and we come over to the page and refresh, now we have this array 01, one two two three three four four five right this is not easy to re read especially when you have a really large array or multi-dimensional array all right so i use this pretext here and it's just a code strip a snippet in sublime that i use that just uses pre-tags this pre-formatted doesn't mean anything we can take it out um, but it's the pre-tags here and by doing that, when we type in my array here and come over and refresh the page, we have an array that we can actually look at and see if it's, you know, if it's a multidimensional, it'll show each tree as it goes down of what uh, is in that array. So now we have zero, one, and this is the array starts with zero and goes to four. Now with our array here, we can now come in here and add in some brackets like this or some single quotes like this and we can say first and we can give these key names third fourth 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 I don't know if that's spelled right or not fifth fifth man I'm having a hard day today so now if we come over here and we refresh now we have first second third fourth fifth as the key names so that is an easy way for us to build an array now we want to json that array so we're going to do um we're just going to echo this out so to the page so you can see it and again in this function in this short code that's not the correct way to do it i'm just doing it as an example to show you guys so we're going to json encode our array so my array and so we're going to print this out to the page all right so now json has it we've we've created a json string for the array here and if we come down and we do echo serialize and show you guys the difference here my array so this is a serialized version of that array now let's add a break after this so that you can let's do it right here I want, I want to be able to show that that's on a different line. All right, break like that. Okay, so let's go over here and refresh. Now, if you look, this JSON has a lot less characters than this serialize. So that's where I was saying if we know the data, specifically what data it is, we use JSON because it, it is a smaller file, especially if it's thousands and thousands of rows. We just, for an example, did the other day, we had um, orders that we were 
submitting somewhere. Um, and we put that into JSON because it was like 370,000 rows. And that was JSON because serialize would have been so much longer of a file. The, the 330,000 or 370,000, whatever it was, was already like a 27 meg file. And it was just a, a TXT file or a CSV file type file. Um, so that was already 27 meg. If we didn't serialize, it could have been almost double that size. So using JSON like that, we made the file size smaller. Um, serializing makes it much, much bigger. So those are the two differences. Now, that's just talking about the actual size. Multi-dimensional, it doesn't matter. It, they, they both do kind of the same thing. But if you notice here, we've got one, two, three, four, five items in the array. JSON just formats that in a specific, in the JSON format, and doesn't tell you what's kind of in that array. Where serialize here says, there's actual five items in that array. And so then it goes through each one here, but it tells you how many characters are in each value. So this is says there's, it's a string. So this S means string and there's five. And there, so there's five letters in first. This is a string three. So there's three characters. This is a string of six characters, second. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a string of three characters, TWO, string of five, and so on and so on. So serialize breaks it down into what each value is and how many characters or what type of data that that is. So if we come back over here and we change one of these to four and we save and we come back over here and we refresh, now we've got, you know, you've got your JSON data here and then we've got our serialized information here. So if we go over here and look at the four, you know, this one is a string of five, which is fourth, F-O-R-T-H. Then this one is I for integer. And it says four. It doesn't have the number of characters because it's not a string. It just says it's an integer. So serialize this string up here, this JSON string, it just says four. It doesn't care whether it's a string or whether it's a integer. It does wrap strings in double quotes and doesn't wrap an integer in anything. So you still get back an integer when you do it with JSON, but with serialize, because it's a PHP based um, function, when you unserialize, you get back exactly what that was. So if you pass an object through serialize, when you unserialize it, it becomes an object again. With JSON, it doesn't. It loses that object information. Now it will show you that object, but it's not the same as doing it with serialize. So those are really the two differences in JSON and serialize. Let me know. Uh, your thoughts on this. Let me know if I need to expand on it. Again, if you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I'm going to be making a lot more videos here in the next few weeks and future. <laughs> so thank you so much and see you guys next time.